Welcome to another episode of the State of the Bulldogs. We have Grant and Mike tonight. The NFL is underway. Samford is 0 and 2. Uh, we have witnessed the weird new kickoff in the NFL and have experienced the two minute timeout in college football. Uh, Mike Grant, how we doing? He, he had two minute timeout, right? Not warning, right? It's got to be timeout. Not warning. Yeah, yeah, two minute I timeout. I still don't understand that one, but I don't either. I don't either. I'm not. We're not paid enough. It's above our pay grade, Mike. I would love to get paid what they get paid, so we can. <laughs> figure that out <laughs> yeah yeah uh well boys uh you know Owen two coming in uh to alabama state following the florida l i would not say that there is a lot of momentum in the program but if there's ever an opportunity to write the ship and start building upon something we hope this is the week we understand that we had a similar outlook against west georgia and uh we're made to look like fools. So, guys, Alabama State, uh, who are they? What do they do? Who have they played? Just giving you a quick rundown. They've played NC Central, who looks to be a decent competitor uh, to make it to the Celebration Bowl this year. I don't know if they were a dark horse, but they looked pretty good against Alabama State as one of the favorites to make that uh, game. And then uh, they lost to that one. They lost to NC Central. And then they played Miles College uh, and then won handily. The weird thing about Alabama State, guys, is they played two quarterbacks against NC Central and then played two entirely different quarterbacks against Miles College. Another weird thing. They're not necessarily an option team, but their run to pass breakdown at the current moment is 83 runs to 29 passes. Uh, a lot of oddities on this Alabama State team. We'll kind of get into it a little bit, but uh, just hearing those couple of facts, what do you make of four quarterbacks? If you have four quarterbacks, do you have one? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a lot to prepare for. Maybe it's a lot to prepare true. for. Uh, unfortunately for him, uh, Granted, it was Body who's out for the season. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Body uh, started that game against NC Central. He actually made Alabama State history, becoming the first Hornets quarterback since Darnell Kennedy in '98 to rush for at least 125 and score multiple TDs in a game. And he had 142 yards total and two scores in that game. He was actually the leading uh, rusher for the Southwestern Athletic Conference after Week One. So he went down with the shoulder injuries, having shoulder surgery. So that's why they've had to. Uh, go play four quarterbacks. Yeah, uh, Andrew Body's out for the season with a shoulder injury, uh, limiting, knocking down those number of quarterbacks from four to three. So yeah, that's tough because he was the best. So so in that game, uh, NC Central jumped out to a twenty-one point lead, and Alabama State had to come back. And Body was the focal point of the offense, but they were throwing uh, O'Brien at a pretty heavy rate too. The two guys, Sims and Hayes, then take over for Miles. We don't know what the storyline is there. Uh, yeah. I, I don't have no explanation. You would think that if you're trying to decide between Body and O'Brien, and Body goes down, then we would see O'Brien against Miles. Didn't happen. Uh, Sam, Sims actually, actually, an update to that: O'Brien actually is hurt as well, so he okay. uh, suffered injury. So that's okay. why he didn't play against Miles. So yeah, they've Thank got him you, him out as well. Just found that out right now. So did it? Do you, does it say what the injury is? It does not. It just said he uh, hoped to have sustained injury that could prevent him from playing against Miles, which he didn't play against Miles due to injury. So okay, so we should expect to see O'Brien then against Sanford if he's healthy. Yeah, fair. I think so. Okay, that gives us some kind of clarity because you're looking at this and you're like, "What the heck?" And then you see 83 runs to 29 passes. They this is not Army or Navy out here. They run. I mean, I don't want to say a traditional offense, but it doesn't seem like it's anything special. Um, certainly not a triple option. But the area of concern for Alabama State is probably the defense. A crazy stat that they had against NC Central, who did not light up the scoreboard. These were not high-powered offenses going at it. 500 yards a pop uh, in that game. They only put up 200-something yards. But NC Central was able to complete – each pass for about 13 yards every time. So 
A lot of holes in the secondary. A lot of, uh, you know, what's the word? Um, vulnerability that we should be able to take advantage of. Um, I, I, I just, West Georgia is scaring me. You know, like we, we thought the same thing and it's like, crap, we were so wrong. So, is there yeah, but West other? Georgia also, because you know I've got to give the score of their game every week now just to keep tabs on them, but they lost yeah. 24-38 to Abilene Christian, who went to overtime against Texas Tech in week one. So That's right. They should have won, yeah. Maybe West Georgia's not bad. Yeah, our fingers are still crossed. would have been great if they beat Abilene Christian, but as you said, Mike, they, that's a team that took yeah. Tech to the wire. They're good. They're good. Hey, this just means we got to follow USC football. You mentioned a couple weeks ago. We got to follow that conference the rest of the year now. So we got to we got to so check out West Georgia. Yeah, I know, it's right? So unfortunate. I'm, yeah. No, yeah. I don't want to. But you're right. We have to. So we, um, we have to. Uh, speaking of, we have to. Technically, in the Isaac Committee, we're only zero and one. The Florida loss wouldn't count against us. So technically, we're still zero and one. I guess I'll take that. What do you think still- about that? I don't. It's still two L's. Um, but for Alabama State, this is. I mean, Hatcher kind of let it slip in the post game against Florida. I don't know if he meant to say this, but he said we're gonna be up for some. What did he say, Grant? Lesser competition or softer competition? I believe the term was light, but I'm light thinking competition. thinking that he meant lighter after lighter. what we well, after we just witnessed. I'm thinking that's what the. A thought process was, but yeah, we're going to assume he meant lighter, but he said light. And so I think that we could read a little bit into that in the sense that he thinks we have an opportunity against Alabama state to get things right. You know, Mike in the post game show for Florida, we talked a little bit about our inability to run the ball. Shouldn't be too concerned, right? We're, we're not expecting San Francisco line to come in there and blow up the trenches against Florida uh, and have Quincy run for five, 10 yards pop. But we do expect to see that against Alabama State. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. If we don't see that against Alabama State, I might just not watch another game this whole year. So, yeah, yeah, no, that was rough. I mean, I you know I wasn't on the the post game episode for Florida, but that was pretty infuriating. The run game and just. Getting dominated in the trenches, but at the same time, like that's what you expect from a an SEC opponent. So, yeah, especially uh, when they're starting and a nose guard is four forty nine or however, however big he is, but huge, big guy, not big good, guy. huge, <laughs> yeah, not that good. Yeah, basically, it, it takes what's base, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, I think it'll to be a, a breather for these O line to or our, our O line to yeah, kind of have their way with some guys for the first time. This it'll be good. Awesome. Yeah, it'll be good to establish. We talked about, you know, lack of rhythm against Florida. And this is a game where we're going to be able to develop uh, a little bit more what we should look like going forward. Uh, hopefully, that is kind of what we saw against West Georgia and the, and the success that Quincy had running the ball, but then also a little bit more success passing. Um, I don't know if. I think it's an opportunity for us to build our confidence. If NC Central was able to complete about 13 yards per pass, we should be looking to push the ball down the field and kind of find where we're good at. I mean, we had the big play uh, to Jenkins against Florida down the sideline. That was great, right? We should continue to find those plays. Uh, But we should also see if there's anything in the middle, right? Um, We're going to run our screens. We're going to run our sweeps. We're going to run our – roll out dink and dunks like we always do. But Alabama State's going to give Quincy an opportunity to continue to to develop a feel for throwing down the sideline, throwing up the middle. Because at the end of the day, when we're playing Furman or Mercer in a tight game and they're honed in on what we usually do and you got to break your your tendency, those are kind of the plays we're going to be looking to do, and that's when you have to execute. This is one of the few opportunities – because we get Furman next week, right? This is one of the few opportunities uh, to take advantage of that. And we thought West Georgia was going to be that, obviously not. Yeah, we yeah, do have a, a bi- point. Yeah, we do have a bye week after Alabama State too, like super early in the year compared to last year was like the last for the last two games, I think. So that obviously plays in a factor. Yeah, when it comes to those uh, crunch times, when you got like third and five, third and six against Furman on the road at Chad, you got to be able to make those plays and. 
this is the kind of game where you complete those and get a little bit more confidence. And hopefully you're not in those third and longs like you kind of kind of obviously were against Florida against those athletes, but still it's getting those reps and getting that practice and uh, trying to build up this receiver court a little bit more, see if there's another guy that kind of steps up outside of the Brendan, DJ, EJ, and uh, and Ian Cousin, four guys. So I mean, we brought in 20 new wide receivers. Someone has got to be good, right? Someone's got to be good. Mike, something there's we talked about. Smith in there. That's What's right. That? Yeah. That's right. I said, Mike, there was something we were talking about in the Florida uh, episode where we liked that the defense played better and more physical against the run than West Georgia. I mean, they still allowed like 4.9 yards of carry, but against West Georgia, it was over five. So a little incremental improvement, incremental improvement, but improvement nonetheless. Is that something you think is sustainable? The physicality. Do you think that's something sustainable? Did you see enough in the Florida game to feel a little bit better? Because I know that was a concern we all had following West Georgia. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the D-line is a strong suit that we talked about preseason, having those guys come back, and we felt like we had a lot of physicality there. Um, I was pretty happy with how they played against uh, Florida O-line. I mean, those guys are yeah. massive, and especially was it – second third drive of the game uh after the dj fumble and they had fourth and one they went for it which is first drive. The line. first yeah. drive first drive yeah okay. they yeah. Get my- so we fumbled and then they picked it up and then boom yeah so the things like that that we saw against florida pretty exciting considering that you know that should be the best line that we see all season and it's you know unfortunately again unfortunate that body is hurt for alabama state because he is the best athlete they have at quarterback but they're still going to have a healthy dose of their run. 83 runs to 29 passes. Uh, again, in the similar way to the offense, another opportunity for the defense to get a little bit better, hone in on exactly what their identity is going to be this season. We've heard they're going to play physical. We heard they're going to play fast. Didn't see that against West Georgia. Um, saw that a little bit better or, or a little bit more in Florida, only allowing 14 points, granted with the fortunate fumble in the end zone uh, in the first half to keep it at, uh, 14 but even if they if, even if that had been a fumble only giving up 21 points in a half against florida is pretty good looking for somewhere to build this is our last really our last chance before conference play um we'll get plenty of opportunities great mindset to try to build some confidence at the D-line, but how do we build our confidence in the secondary? Because uh, those boys need some work. It doesn't sound like we're going to get that Saturday. Oh, they're crispy. They got burned so much, they are crispy uh, this week. Uh, Lagway looked like a five-star. Yes. Uh, yes. Hitting all yeah. of his, his down throw, down field passes, but they were wide open every time. Yeah. yeah. So something's got to change there. It does. I, I mean – so when Blagway hit a few of the early deep balls, okay, and when we started realizing that they're, oh, they're actually throwing deep now, we're going to start running with them. And we were able to play well uh, a few of the plays, right? Uh, they still burned us after that. I mean, I think the 85-yard bomb happened in the third quarter. So it wasn't like we just totally uh, snuffed it out once we figured that's what they wanted to do. But it's also Florida, Mike. Like, they got dudes who run – Three five forties, you know. Yeah, no, no. But it's also like it wasn't just Florida, you know. Well, yeah, right. So, <laughs> but also like it's Sanford football, and we're used to it at this point. So, uh, also true. take what we can get, right? Yeah, I mean, I get my player of the game defensively was Dante Pollard, and uh, he was a guy that had a couple tackles for losses, uh, played physical, played fast. If we can get and CJ Douglas had a phenomenal game overall. Uh, if we can get one or two guys to step up as leaders, like playmaking leaders in the secondary, it's a totally different ball game. But you're right, Mike. Area of concern. And Alabama State is frankly not going to uh, threaten that. With body out, if O'Brien's throwing, they don't have the offense to make us look silly. My gosh. I, well, I, I wasn't necessarily don't. saying it was an area of concern. I was more saying it's not an opportunity to test. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not yeah, see, yeah, see what exactly. kind of improvement. Yeah, to kind of gauge see what, what kind of improvement there could yeah, be. Yeah. 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 No, that's certainly true. Definitely. Um, which is – we'll get to the around the SoCon. I, the Furman game, we hyped it up a little bit before the season. 
may not be uh, as much of a game as we thought it, or a big of a game as we thought it might be. But we'll see. We'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but anything, I mean, we got a fun little trivia question about their coach. But anything else on Alabama State? Well, I mean, I hate this so much that the West Georgia game is really screwing it all up. Yeah, I want to say that this will be the cupcake win. Yeah, I'm assuming, our, is this yeah. homecoming? Uh, no, is it? No, it's too no. Early. I guess it's probably too early, right? Yeah. Uh, hold on, I'll tell you. But it is first home. It is first home game of the season. So yeah, first, first home game, game Saturday season. night. Yeah, night game. That's too. something we got going for ourselves. Probably some fireworks. Hopefully, we still yeah. do that. I don't think so. That's did you see Vandy ran out of fireworks this past Saturday? No way. Did they win? <laughs> yeah, they did. Oh, they crushed Alcorn State. But at the oh, end of the game, well, well, they oh, scored okay. a touchdown, yeah, okay. and their yeah. the uh, scoreboard said, "We're sorry, we're out of fireworks." <laughs> First yeah, they probably didn't. Th- they didn't think they would have to update their allotment. Yeah, they're like, "Oh my gosh, two weeks in, we got we got to get more fireworks." Like, what is going on over here? This season. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It does not say when homecoming is on the football schedule. I did not look at the university calendar, which would have been a little bit smarter. Uh, but then again, I went to Sanford, not Stanford. So, uh, as far as I know, Alabama State is not homecoming. Yeah. And one more thing, I just hope the Sanford band doesn't just doesn't show up because they will be outnumbered and outgunned by Alabama State. So I just hope we have a, like Graham. We have a band. Uh, allegedly, I don't know if they go to Homewood High School or if they actually go to Sanford, yeah, no, but I mean, there, there is certainly Homewood High School. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I just know against Alabama State, they probably don't need to show up. But I think Sanford could just call State and be like, uh, Do you guys want to do the halftime show? Because we just want to let y'all do the work. Well, I'm more fun watching you guys do your thing than us. I even try to go do something, so we can always count on, on Homewood's uh, on Homewood's band showing up. I <laughs> Again, do not know why the freaking <laughs> band does not exist. They can take a bus to West Georgia, Florida. Okay, I get longer <laughs> bus ride. I yeah, understand. obviously, yeah, yeah. Uh, we couldn't even get tickets. Like the the families couldn't even get tickets to Florida, so I doubt they would have given them, given us enough space for a band. Um, but come on, guys, they didn't give us an allotment, Florida. Uh, no. There was like 200 total or 100 total tickets. It was super small. Um, yeah, some yeah some parents were having trouble actually like getting tickets from from Sanford because of Florida's allotment, like the contract way it was set up or something like that. They couldn't yeah. get enough. So there was no it like was we did last there was time. no like little Sanford section that we're used to seeing. Uh, it was kind of scattered throughout, but there were quite a few Bulldogs in Gainesville. Yeah, we got down there. We're walking downtown like like. We can count on one hand the number of Sanford people. Then as it got later, we can start counting. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. So it was cool seeing like some people we know and run into. Actually seeing some guys make the trip, meet some new guys we hadn't met before too. So it was cool seeing seeing people go down there and take advantage of a, a closer trip like this. Yeah. And uh, I would be remiss. Jeb wanted us to say that his opinion of the team is that Sanford is, quote, mid uh, I think that's Gen Z slang for something. Gen Z slang for not good, not bad, but mid. Here, let me pull out Urban Dictionary for you old guys, yeah. and I'll let you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's get a little trivia. Alabama State, hopefully the cakewalk. Hopefully, my goodness, if it's not, well, basketball season's about two months away. Um, but first, a tr- little trivia on Alabama State. This was a fun one. So their coach, Eddie Robinson Jr., longtime uh, NFL player was drafted in 1992 to the Oilers played for the Oilers Jaguars and Bills both the Houston Oilers and Tennessee Oilers uh what Super Bowl okay what Super Bowl did he partake in or I guess with what team yeah first of all it's the Tennessee Titans not the Oilers well, it started – well, you're right. They are now the Tennessee Titans. But for a year, it was the Tennessee Oilers yeah. in Memphis. Oh, the who in owned, Memphis. Yeah. But who owns the uniforms? Like, I, Yeah. I That's a sore yeah. subject uh, yeah. in the city of Houston. They would – yeah. Well, would, yeah. as a Titans fan, we tried to wear the Oilers uniform against the Texans and lost the game. So, in my mind, we've given up <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like last season. Yeah. <laughs> 
as long as we don't see another a Will Levis pick like we saw today, I think that I that think they'll be okay. Embarrassing, guys. That was so bad. Oh, yeah, it was bad. Well, <laughs> I, I not as bad nap. as a family I, member of someone on the pod, but oh, I didn't watch any of that. Yikes! It was bad. It oh was gosh. Bad. Yeah, we need to move on before we say something. Um, yeah. So I think the Bills didn't they go to the Super Bowl four times in a row in the nineties? With Jim Kelly, and they lost all four. They lost all of them. Yeah, I don't think the, the Oilers ever went to the Super Bowl. The Titans went to Super Bowl in '98 or '99. I don't think the Jaguars have ever been. So I'm just going to go with the Bills. Take take the uh, higher percentage chance there. Yeah, you know, guys. Uh, yeah, I was going to go. Yeah, I was going to. Yeah, I was going to say Bills too. So, you know, guys. Uh, great guess there. Great guess. Y'all are going to kill me after Jeb's trivia uh, fiasco. After I told you not to, okay. After you told me not to, Grant. God. While it was three organizations that he played for, um, it was the Tennessee Titans Super Bowl that he was a part of. I know, I know, it, oh my. I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was the Tennessee Titans uh, making Jeb the, proud. The Oiler yeah. organization making Jeb proud. I cannot believe I just screwed it up. That's why. That's why. Sam, I'm muting your microphone for 10 seconds. You get a 10-second timeout <laughs> yeah. after that. But why Sam's not here? <laughs> Eight, seven. Okay, I'll, I won't do that. But yeah, all right, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's uh, not so good yeah, air. Just that dead air. Yeah. He was a cornerback uh, and had a. I mean, that's a long career. He played for the Bills in 2002. It was his last okay. stop. Um, but he finished. I mean, his his career stats are. Kind of crazy. 804 tackles, 23 sacks, six force fumbles, uh, and six picks with one touchdown. Hmm. Where do you play in college? Alabama State, baby. He's nice. coaching the alma mater. Took over in 2021, and uh, as we said at, at the beginning, they're a heavy favorite for the SWAC this year. So it's doing big things. Eddie Robinson Jr., pretty sweet. All right, boys, around – the SoCon. So a lot happening in this league. Overall, terrible week for the SoCon. Terrible week. Uh, just run down the results right quick. Uh, Citadel falling to South Carolina State after Still close. a crazy, I think we can call it an upset win over Charleston Southern the week before, losing 23 to 20 to South Carolina State. Western Carolina in the shock of the week after. Pulling a tight one against NC State, lost to Campbell, twenty-four to sixteen. Lost to the Fighting Camels. Uh, VMI lost to Bucknell in another tight game, thirty-five twenty-eight. Those teams just need to play forever. Uh, very competitive football right there. And uh, Mercer beat up on Old Bethune Cookman, thirty-one to two. Wofford beat Richmond. That was the bright spot. Are the Terriers? Are the Terriers legit this year? Everyone had them in the bottom third of the conference, but all they do is keep winning. This time over the Spiders, 26-19. ETSU unsurprisingly beat UVA Wise, D2 team, 61-0. Furman in the shock and another shocker of the week, losing to the team that Citadel beat just last week. Charleston Southern, 24-20. What is up with the Paladins? Uh, and then UTC almost pulled off a stunner. Losing to Georgia State 24-21. If they had won that game, we could just crown them SoCon champs because they would be the most impressive team to date. Hearing those results, boys, hearing those results, uh, what sticks out? And I would love to hear if anyone has a new top four. Okay. I'm just heartbroken about Firm, and I can't believe that they would lose. <laughs> yeah, we are heartbroken, Mike. Just a, just a darn shame. Um I quote Jeb from last week's episode. He said that one thing is clear and obvious or something like that, that Western Carolina is still the number one team in SoCon for his <laughs> prediction. So I'm just going to say it's no longer the case. No longer the case. They uh, went from looking like the best to what? Yeah, well, I think after Tennessee playing NC State this past weekend, we can just say that NC State is not a good football team. That's facts. Chattanooga, though, that's good. impressive. Tennessee's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, Chad is impressive. I mean, only losing 24-21. Yeah. yeah. And considering they put up a similar score against Tennessee as NC State did, 
think chat's still uh, still my favorite to win the league. Shots fired, dude. Poor Wolfpack. So, so is chat favorite over NC State next week when the, if they play nationally? <laughs> yeah, Grayson McCall. Uh, I think it's it's got to be Wofford, right? First two games on the road, picking up a big win over over a ranked Spiders team. They beat Gardner Webb on the road last week by one. Beat Richmond this week by seven. They host William and Mary this week, so they yep. could legitimately be three and zero before they host Mercer on the twenty eighth. So I think Mercer. I think Wofford picking up that uh, big win against Richmond uh, last on Saturday was huge for them and uh, big for the conference. As we said, the conference had kind of had a down week this week. That's a tough schedule for Wofford. So pretty impressive to start off two and zero, and then you know William and Mary is always in contention to be a ranked playoff team uh, in the FCS. So we'll see how that goes this weekend. But um, pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm frankly stunned. Um, Wofford. Takes the cake. Most impressive team so far. Uh, UTC, man, if only they had been able to pull that out against Georgia State. The SoCon had, like we like we said a few weeks ago, the SoCon has had opportunities to look really good uh, in the eyes of the committee, and we lost a few opportunities, right? Western really should have beaten Campbell. Citadel, before we would not have expected them to win any of these games, but after beating Charleston Southern, expected them to beat South South Carolina State, and then Furman. I mean, yes, they got annihilated by Ole Miss. Shocker. No one expected really anything different. But to then come out and lose to Charleston Southern, who just lost to Citadel? That's like, tough. What? Yeah. Uh, and then they have Stetson up next. Surely Furman's going to get their first one of the season over the Hatters. But the intriguing matchup next week, UTC and Mercer. Mercer continues just to look good. I mean – they they get to uh, play anybody. I mean, they, they what they played their D one team last or FBS team last week, and then they had uh, a cupcake this week, and then they have UTC. So that should yep. be the game to watch um, in terms of conference play. But then ETSU, they got the spicy North Dakota State matchup this week uh, at home. At home, in Again, Johnson City. How did they get that d- uh, deal done? Love it though for the Bison coming down. Uh, to battle the SoCon. Uh, speaking I of guess ETSU, Bucks, I guess. yeah. Speaking of ETSU, did you see that their like new tradition? They're going to start is singing, uh, uh, singing a wagon wheel after at the end of every third quarter. That's like a new thing they're going to start. I hate that. That's I hate that kind of cool. It's not. <laughs> you can find a song. How about sing something that Dolly Parton wrote? Not well, because wagon, wagon wheel references Johnson City. But you can't even though, head west. Even though we found Johnson out that's and not Cumberland factual, Gap. but and people don't know that. Wheels don't don't uh, don't um, rock, don't rock, rock. They roll. They roll. It's the most annoying song written. Anyway, I'll get off that cool. stupid, stupid soapbox. Uh, Will ETSU get rolled by North Dakota State? Yes, presumably yes. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Hey. You got to play the game. Uh, Western's Thanks, traveling. Oh, I don't know if they're traveling. They're they're playing Elon next. Having lost to Campbell, they need to beat Elon. Uh, yeah, but that's I at, sidetracked us a little bit. Top four. Yeah. Do we have a new top four? Yeah, that's at Elon too, by the way. Um, okay, it's at Elon. Yeah, they yeah. got to win that one. That's a must. If Western wants any kind of grace uh, by not winning the SoCon, they got to they got to get that dub. Um, and have a chance at the playoff, but any new, a top new top four. It's tough. We only have two teams that are undefeated. Obviously, uh, Mercer and Wofford at two and zero. It it is tough, and a lot of these a lot of the teams have played. Uh, yeah, right. They play their big so, game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, UTC is still the top. Yeah, but I agree. I think you can make an argument for Wofford to re- to take over the four spot. I'm still not comfortable putting to kick Furman totally out of that conversation. Yeah. Um, but if you wanted to tell me you wanted to put UTC, uh, Mercer, Wofford, and um, Western in that, I mean, I think you could convince me of that and kick Furman out. Yeah, I wouldn't have any problem with that. Wofford's really screwing this all up, and Sanford is too. Sanford, if Sanford had beat West Georgia and we still kind of had our preseason expectations in line, sure, 
you know, maybe St. Free holds on to that four spot, but we are solidly like sixth or seventh at the moment. Okay, we can get to this next week, but just another point on uh, Western. They go to Elon, then they go to Montana the week after. So they really, really do need this Elon game, or else they could be 0 4 real quick. Who that goes would be no Berman. Uh, Western Carolina goes to Montana oh, on the twenty first. Yes, yeah, so they're at, yeah, at Elon this week, and then at Montana, yeah. which we can get to next week. But they needed that Campbell dub. That's tough. That's tough. Wow. I know it's impossible. But I wish there was some parity in the scheduling of non conference games with the SoCon. As it in, feels, like it just feels kind of all over the place in terms of who's okay. getting good competition versus who's playing UVA wise. Yeah. And out state. That. I hear that. And like VMI is getting their by game this week. They're playing Georgia Tech. So, I mean, there's. But. So, in terms of like FCS playoffs, you know, Western playing in Elon and on Montana would matter for their seating outside of an auto bid. Would, I guess, Alcorn State and West Georgia would matter for us, but Florida wouldn't. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The by games don't count against you. Um, if you win, though, Grant, do they count for you? It's a little silly if they do. Yeah. Yeah, let's see why not. Well, let's see why they would. I mean, it's been what? It's been when's the last time other than like Montana ago. State? Yeah, uh, I can't remember the last time. Beat South Carolina in like oh, gosh, 2021 yeah. or whenever it was. That's it was not. It was somebody. not. The, yeah, yeah, it's been recent. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I wish the SoCon had performed a little bit better because it. This could have set this kind of scheduling. Like, yes, Michael, it's a little all over the place. But when you have your teams like Citadel pulling some of these wins off, you got to have your big dogs like Western uh, winning the not. I'm not going to say easy. They lost. Uh, but the more manageable games like Campbell, because yeah. now you look at that Montana game. It's a like unless Montana just screws up, that's an L for Western. And now at that point, you lose to Campbell, you lose to Montana, you have two non-conference losses. They're certainly going to lose something in the conference. Uh, you're out of the playoff race. They'll probably lose two in the conference. I mean, margin for error is slim to none. Same goes for Sanford. You lose to West Georgia, who is not going to win the UAC. Abilene Christian looks good. Tarleton State looks good. Uh, even if they're competitive, that loss is still not going to be anywhere close to a uh, good thing. So. Yeah, that's that just gives more reason to think you would have to pick off one of these big ones, obviously, to kind of offset that too. Once yeah, we get down the road, whether that's at Chad or which I hate, I do not Western want, at home. I do not want um, to cheer on Western over Montana. I love watching. Like it's great that I, I'm happy as a fan that they lost to Campbell. It's like I want Western to lose every game. I want ETSU to lose every game. Uh, but from Sanford's perspective. The more these teams win, and if we beat them, the much better we look. So, for what it is, I guess go Western. Citadel will be two and one after this week, though, after they beat North Greenville. So, they, would, <laughs> yeah. they do have that going for them. So, <laughs> yeah, shout out to Coach Drayden. Yeah. Yeah. Furman's going to get their first win. Citadel's going to be two and one. UTC Mercer, who knows? It's a yeah. good slate. Uh, Sanford, we're going to get our first win. Hopefully, knock on wood, fingers cro- all the fingers crossed. Um, anything else on SoCon football before we get to State of the Dolls? We might need to scrap this whole post game show idea if we do lose to Alabama State because that's three oh, in a row. Which you know, we can't. <laughs> sorry, Tay, we're canceling this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it, it's over. If we lose to Alabama State, forget the post game. It's cursed. It is cursed. We'll bring it back for basketball. And then when we start 0-15, we'll flush <laughs> it then. Um, but all right, instead of the Bulldogs, a lot going on. Uh, y'all, can, Does anyone want to take women's soccer? I'll do it, yeah. yeah you do know that, uh, that there had to be some regression, right? You go through all these different years you pick off these big wins you beat oklahoma last year you tie auburn and you have a few others you lose all those seniors from last year there had to be some regression but it is kind of interesting that a coach yelling is like i know we're playing the same hard non-conference schedule we're going to get these ladies ready for conference play maybe it does work out maybe it doesn't but it's still getting this getting them this kind of experience kind of 
like baptism by fire early on with this kind of new group. You do have a couple seniors that they came back from last year, some junior, some previous juniors. So I think they'll get it rolling eventually. It's just this this not conference slate has been pretty brutal. They still go uh, to Georgia on the twelfth, and then they host Georgia Southern on S- September fifteenth on Sunday before they start conference play. So I think I think they'll get there eventually, but still, it's just been tough seeing them play these big, huge non conference games trying to get them ready for conference play. It has, um, but it's one of those things. If it's a down year, you got to keep on. You got to keep the schedule heavy. You know, you can't just time it to where oh, we think it's going to be a rebuild. We stop scheduling these teams because I don't know how tenuous the relationships are. But you just want to keep the relationship fresh. Keep these teams on the schedule uh, because when we are more competitive again early in the season, then it works in our favor. So I guess we'll just take the L's on the chin, keep on rolling. Won't really matter. We're, I mean, the so, winning the SoCon is still all that matters, yeah. and uh, we'll just take the approach baseball does. Win the it's good SoCon. recruitment tool too, just exactly. like in basketball. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. We were talking. Uh, Grant and I were talking. Every player that walked into uh, the swamp, they were all posting the video of kind of like walking out of the tunnel into the stadium. Um, yeah. Because yeah, you know, you're a guy who got overlooked, land in the FCS. And what's one awesome thing that Sanford can say is, oh, hey, we play against the SEC and the ACC. And you can go to these sweet uh, story-filled stadiums and experience um, the height of college football, uh, which is awesome. So, yeah, yeah. same goes for all the sports. take a 10-hour bus ride home with Bruce yep. Oliver. And- <laughs> yep. You got to take it on the chin. But, hey, man, it was a good – They they're – I don't know. I don't know of anyone that regrets uh, signing up for those games. It's got to be yeah. fun to play against the best. Uh, going, moving on to women's volleyball on a heat, absolute heater, swept the Evansville uh, Invitational, and we have Baylor and LSU in a little uh, Baylor right. Invitational coming up. Boys, if we beat LSU and Baylor and remain undefeated, we're becoming a volleyball pod official. They're they're breaking out of state of the Bulldogs and into their own segment uh, because that would just be rem- we already beat Mississippi State and then we beat LSU we beat Baylor I have no idea if those teams are any good at volleyball they might be terrible. bring on Nebraska baby bring on that's, that's right can't be I'll, stopped yeah Nebraska I, Texas bring them all on Texas law I think whoever was number one lost this week I don't oh, well. follow women's volleyball that closely but I did see that. Uh, but yeah, great, great things happening on the volleyball court for the dogs. There may be where this year's Citadel, who basically just runs the table all the way. Oh, I forgot you about that. Yes, yeah. you forgot about that juggernaut last year. Um, yeah. Cross country, the Jacksonville State Invitational. Uh, we were joking before the show was filled with a slew of community college and colleges and teams we've never heard of. Uh, women, the the women's team took first, and the men took third. There were some sizable uh, colleges and universities. I wrote down a few: UAB, Troy, Jacksonville State, Georgia State, West Georgia. Um, but season starting off pretty strong for the women, taking the first uh, dub in the t- first tournament, and then the men third. Okay, um, based on the competition, I would not expect much from the men going forward. But uh, the women, we still don't really know because they won. Uh, anything else, boys? Any final notes, Mike? What you got? You got to be thinking something. Any what message? Any message to San Nation heading into the hopefully our first <clears> one <throat> after starting zero and two? Everybody get to Homewood this weekend. Uh, unveiling unveiling of the new stadium, kind of new oh, stadium. Oh, yeah. Pictures that's look great. sick. I have not yeah. gotten to see it in person. Grant, have you seen it in person? Uh, I did when we did the punt, pass, and kick, like the new field and everything. But yeah. About, is the new Cyber Hall open yet? Not like yet. I think, yeah, I think that opening, I want to say it's, there's not a game family weekend, but I think they kind of set up the grand opening of that for family weekend to kind of get people to go and check that out. So I think that's the case. But That's going to be sick. Yeah, Mike, we buried the lead. That that should have been what we started out talking about Alabama State, not even the game. Like the, the atmosphere. It's going to be yeah. amazing uh, unveiling the new, is it done? Done? That's a good question. I I don't know the answer. I guess I guess I take the twenty minute drive, go check out myself. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that can report back tomorrow, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, but yeah, That's game under really good. Yeah, finally getting a night game didn't go on last year, so it's cool that just every usual Thursday night game that we had before when we were in school, it's cool to get actually like a Saturday night game. night game. I mean, and Alabama plays at 11, so that game will be over with. Auburn plays New Mexico. You don't need to watch that one, so you can just come down and ch- uh, check out Sanford. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I got a freaking wedding to go to. Can't believe it. I cannot either, Mike. Who gets married in the fall? <laughs> fall, uh, fall. Fall. What's his name again? It starts with uh, Job. Is that Job? Is a, No, no, that's not. That's a Bible character. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, some guy's wedding. Who yeah. gets married in the fall? With that, uh, State of the Bulldogs is out. We will catch y'all next week, hopefully, talking about the one and two Sanford Bulldogs.